in Lilui Nishmas Maris Rachaleah B'Rab Chaim Svi. We speak about the Tkufa, the period of Sira Saomer. We look at the Psukim that are found in Parshas Emor. We find Usfartem Lachem Mimacharat HaShabbat. You shall then count seven complete weeks, Mimacharat HaShabbat, literally the day after the Shabbat. Miyom Haviachem et Omer HaTnufa, from the day that you bring the Omer sacrifice. Sheva Shabbato Tmimoti Yena. You should count for yourself seven complete weeks. And you count Ad Mimacharat HaShabbat HaShviit. And here Mimacharat HaShabbat refers to the seventh week. Tisperu chamishim yom, you count 50 days, and then vikraftem mincha chadosh alashem, and then you bring a new offering to God. So I'd like to raise a number of questions within these psukim that I think will give us a sense, a direction, and what is, on a certain level, our avoda, our work during this kufa, during this period of Sira Saome. The first thing that's interesting to note is that we count Mimacharat HaShabbat from the day after Shabbat, which our rabbis tell us is Yantif, and we count again that same phrase, Mimacharat HaShabbat, and here it's the day after the seventh week, after 49, seven complete weeks, the 50th day we bring the Mincha Chadasha. And that has to be understood, this almost sandwich of Macharat HaShabbat and Macharat HaShabbat. We also need to understand the difference between the original offering being an Omer HaTnufa, we know is a barley sacrifice, and in the end we bring a Mincha Chadasha, which we know is from the Shtei Alechem, from bread. We need to understand the dynamics of that as well. And finally, we need to understand a very famous question of why if I'm counting seemingly in anticipation for Shavuos, and I want to count towards something, so I usually count down, 10 days left, 8 days left, I'm excited about something. Here, so to speak, I'm counting backward. 10 days have passed, 12 days have passed, 30 days have passed. I'm counting from Pesach rather than towards Shavuot, and that needs to be understood. The structure, I believe, that is a very, very deep structure to help us explain the period of Sira Saomer, it's found in the Pasuk in the beginning of Shira. Shirim wrote down in source number two in Torah studies. Of Mashcheni Acharecha Narutza Heviani Hamelech Hadarav. Our rabbis have explained that these three aspects refer to three different time periods. Mashcheni Dromi is Yitzhia Mitzrayim. Acharecha Narutza is the counting of the Omer. Haviani Hamelech Hadarav, and God has brought me into his chambers is the giving of the Torah. And he explains that Jerome is passive. At the end of their enslavement, they were not deserving of redemption, they were taken hold of by God, and we understand that it was a Kaddish Baruch Hu taking the initiative, Klai Yisrael was passive. It was singular. And it affected only one side of their being, their spirit responded, their physical passions did not. Mashcheni is the aspect of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, where Kaddish Baruch Hu comes down and takes hold of Kla Yisrael. And this explains why Yantif of Pesach, the day where Kaddish Baruch Hu came down and was Mashcheni and drew us, is referred to as the Shabbos. Rabbi Miller, quoting Rabbi Sadaka Cohen, explains that the sanctity of the Shabbat is an eternal and chainless sanctity. It's a gift from Hashem. While the festivals, on the other hand, depend mainly on the human decision of the baiting to sanctify them. We are therefore commanded in 6a to count the Omer from the morrow of the first day of Pesach, of the redemption from Egypt. But the Torah refers to this day as the Shabbat to show the particular holiness of this festival. A holiness immutable and independent of all human agencies, sharing with the Shabbat the nature of a spontaneous, unsolicited gift of God. This is what the Shabbat